Now, a sense of the numinous. In one of my other videos, I mentioned a sense of the numinous. What is that? That is, to describe in the best case scenario, that is a, a feeling of mystery or awe uh, that's really, really hard to describe. You have some sort of feeling of, wow, this is really, really, really cool in some sort of weird, profound way. Though another time I had this type of experience, I've had these experiences in the real world prior to me be becoming a Christian, okay? And if you were to look back on your life, most of you have had these experiences too. Why I thought of this is because I was reading this thing with uh, William Lane Craig talking about an atheist who had this experience. This is not exclusive to religious people. The last time, the one, another time I remember having this experience, I was in Westminster Abbey with my wife uh, sometime around 2000. And Westminster Abbey is really, really, really cool. It's, it was built, originally built in something like 960 AD. So you're in this really old English church and most of your English kings have been buried there. So there was like sarcophagi and you're like, oh my God, I think it was Henry V It may have been. You're like, I, wow, this is really, really, really cool. Now, remember when I talked about spiritual experience, one of the key attributes of a spiritual experience is ineffable. Ineffable means beauty beyond description, hard to put into words, hard to describe. The sense that the overwhelming mystery of it all that sort of pulls you in. This is really, really, really fascinating in sort of some sort of next level way. As it's described, characteristics of the numinous experience, a sense of mysterious power, which is beyond us and incomprehensible. Though it is overwhelming, it also feels inviting, as if it is drawing us towards, its, the mysteri towards itself. The mysterious, overwhelming and inviting power is both fascinating and enchanting. Sometimes our spiritual awareness presents a sense of ghost-like presence. Now that's the beginning stage of a spiritual experience. Remember what the, what the atheists say? Extraordinarily claims require extraordinary proof. That is not an extraordinary claim. That's a very mundane claim. That is something that happens all the time. And if you, the atheist, look at your own experience, you've had three or four of those in your life. And if you haven't, it's nothing to brag about. I swear to God, it's really not. <laughs> if you're one of these people going, no, I've never had experience like that. Well, that means your heart is not available to it. Honestly, because it's a normal human experience. The overall does need not be religious. Need not be religious. It can be just a sense. I told my mom about that experience and she said, yeah, I've had those experiences a few times in my life. Sometimes in church, sometimes in art museums, sometimes at concerts. In its most mundane description, it can be described as just an overwhelming sense of like the mystery of life, the awe of, wow, life is really mysterious and awesome. But taken another way, it is the beginning stages of the religious experience. And every single atheist has probably had it. And like I said, if you haven't, don't brag. It doesn't mean you're Mr. Super Rational Scientific Analytic Guy. It means you're just hard-hearted and your heart has not been available to the experience because it's a normal human experience. I repeat, normal human experience. So if you haven't had it, I wouldn't be so proud of myself because it's normal, everyday occurrence. If your heart is available to it, you can cultivate that experience and you can have it all sorts of different places, not just in churches. But why churches? Because, one, the experience is ineffable. Ineffable. A beauty beyond description. Really, really hard to put into words. Really, really hard to describe. It is the genesis, is the birthplace of almost every religious tradition, every line of poetry, every creative expression under the sun. I, honestly, all of it can be sourced to that beginning experience. It is the genesis of what we know as religion. And it's nothing more profound, it's, it is nothing more than just, wow, this is really mysterious. Because it's not too much of a leap of imagination. Matter of fact, it's the most logical conclusion from that experience. See, a lot of you have religious baggage, and I accept that. You were, la were raised in fundamentalist traditions that are not about that at all. They're not about spiritual and life is awesome and things like that. They're about 
you know, as atheists kind of say, they're about control and something other than that. But that doesn't mean that's not the, that's, that isn't the genesis of what we are actually talking about. See, that experience is a starting off point. The fact that it's ineffable, it's hard to describe, hard to put into words. That's when you have the poet come in. That's when you have the artist come in. Trying to give voice to that experience. What is this mysterious Mysterious other than me. What is this mysterious pulling other than me? Other than myself? And again, atheists love to say, extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. That ain't no extraordinary claim. That is a mundane claim, happens to people all over the world. And if it has never happened to you, don't brag. Honestly, it's not, it's not, a good, it's not, it's not something in your favor really doesn't mean you're super rational science guy and I'm so impressed with your intelligence. It means your heart is not available to it. You have shut yourself off from a basic human function. From a basic human reality, you have shut your heart to it. Bang, full stop. Now this isn't proof positive of God, nor is it intended to be proof positive of God. It's just the beginning of where the religious impulse comes from. And I knew it when I had that experience. The time when I had it in Westminster Abbey, I knew that it was some sort of, that's how I experienced it. Now that is subjective. You can have that experience as an atheist. And they do. And there are books about it. You know, I forget the guy's name. Parsons, he's a famous atheist. Brad Parsons, I think his name is. Talks about having that experience as a non-believer in God. It isn't necessarily proof positive of God, nor is it necessarily intended to be. But it is the beginning stages of the religious impulse. It is the beginning stages of, the, of for my money, the creative impulse too. Sense of the numinous. So, that's all on the subject for now. Yeah, I'll go back into it. <clears throat> I'll go back into another point. Amen.